This edition of my railway history series is about the first ever rail car to run on the County Donegal Railway in the northwest of Ireland in County Donegal and um, here we see the logo of what became the County Donegal Railways Joint Committee. It covered about 125 miles of three foot gauge, narrow gauge uh, railway routes uh, across uh, the southern and central parts of County Donegal, as I say, in the northwest of Ireland. And it was an amazing company with some uh, lovely steam locomotives and especially some amazing rail cars. In fact, it was an innovator in the use of rail cars. But this is about rail car, its very first rail car, rail car number one, which was a little uh, uh, rail motor is perhaps the more ex exact way of um, describing it. And when it was bought in 1907, it was running on uh, most of the routes of the County Donegal Railway, that is from Straban westwards out to Stranorla and then from Stranorla down through the, the Barnsmore Gap to Donegal Town, as you can see on the map. And then from Donegal Town there were two branches, one heading west out to the fishing um, port of Killybex and also down to the southwest to the uh, little town of Ballyshannon. And also back in Stranorla, uh, one of the routes that the, this first little rail car was used on uh, quite a bit was the, the branch that ran westwards up into the hills of the upper Finn Valley from Stranorla up to Glenties. And as far as I know, it never ran on the Straban to uh, Derry uh, branch. Again, which you can see to heading in the top right of the map there. So anyway, here is rail car number one. It's been preserved, thank goodness. It's now on display at the uh, Ulster Folk and Transport Museum at Cultra uh, in uh, County Down and uh, it's very nicely preserved. This is actually the final version, naturally enough, it is the final version that has been um, preserved because it went through quite a number of uh, variations in its uh, working life. It's a small four-wheeled vehicle. Uh, originally it was built as an open-bodied vehicle by a company called All Day and Onions of Birmingham. I think that's a fantastic uh, maker's name. And it, the, the company bought this on the recommendations of its then manager, Mr. Um, R.M. Livesey, because they were looking for an inspection car. And it had just a little basic engine in the front with a centrally mounted driver's seat and a bench seat across the back, um, which was used for the inspector uh, to travel on. But it was open and uh, there was a, a sort of a half height partition which separated the front and back portions. But basically it's open to um, uh, the elements, very much uh, 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 rough weather <laughs> would have been a bit of a problem for it. And um, in September 1911, um, the, the new uh, manager of the County Donegal Railway, Henry Forbes, who joined the uh, company uh, not very much uh, before that, he said that it's not really um, used very much. But they kept it anyway because they'd already bought the vehicle and it was just basically used as a bit of a runabout around Stranola. <clears throat> but it really came into its own in the 1926 uh, general strike when the, uh, especially the coal strike, which was much longer than the general strike, uh, which meant that coal uh, wasn't available from England coming into Ireland, into um, northwest of the Republic of Ireland that would be by that stage after partition. So they were able to use this little petrol engine vehicle to carry a few passengers and uh, the mail bags. Um, previous to this, they had scrapped the original engine and a more modern Ford engine had been fitted, but still using the, um, the initial gears and axles. And it also that's when they covered it in and they managed to squeeze in six passengers. But again, apart from the coal strike, uh, it, it wasn't used very much, although it did replace a steam train for the early morning uh, mail deliveries along the Glenties branch from Stranola. And also uh, it did have a service back and forth to Straban on the Finn Valley uh, line itself. And uh, it was quite a popular 
uh, as I say normal seating capacity was for about um, six and each year it was running about uh, that 6,000 miles on this uh, on these uh, the Donegal Railway branches so that's quite a quite a lot of use for such a small vehicle and um, eventually the uh, uh, the whole thing had to be um, rebuilt with a new Ford axle assembly and um, also just a, basically it became a Ford uh, powered and um, transmission Ford power and transmission Ford engine and transmission and um, it was described there as a, as a rail car or as the motor or the inspection car but it wasn't known as number one it was only became number one uh, when two new rail cars were introduced to the County Donegal Railway which will be the subject of my next uh, little railway history uh, and um, it, it was uh, by by then by by about um, 1926 it was running a 22 horsepower Ford engine uh, in it and it continued in use like that with various rebuilds and uh, uh, in 1949 it was actually repowered with a 36 horsepower engine second hand from one of the other rail cars the the wooden body inside is about eight and a half inches long and about three and a half inches of uh, three and a half feet eight and a half feet long and three and a half feet wide uh very low overhang compared with other early rail cars and Forbes actually claimed he could get 10 people sitting comfortably in it an official drawing show it's seating seven persons in addition to the driver uh, but there's um you know at the best of times it would have been a squeeze and you can see from these photographs taken of it in Coltrada it's, it's quite a small uh, little um, vehicle originally the front wheels had a diameter of two feet and the rear wheels of a uh, sort of two foot six diameter which meant it sort of uh, leant forward a bit uh, but in January 1930 these were uh, all replaced by new two foot two inch um, uh, diameter wheels so this, they are quite small uh, springs additional springs were fitted in 1930 as well um, and up to the end of April uh, 1956 uh, when it was withdrawn from service it actually ran just over or just just about 19 and a half thousand miles on the little railway um, on, on the railway branches and then it was withdrawn and then it was subsequently bought by the Ulster Museum of which the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum at Coltra is now um, a constituent part and the important thing about number one is that during the 1920s and 19 certainly during the mid to late 1920s and into the 1930s it really uh, transformed the general manager's idea of what could be done with the sort of petrol engine vehicles so Henry Forbes really was quite taken with this vehicle when he was um, of the possibilities of such vehicle and as soon as he found that they were of practical use you could just uh, turn on the ignition and away and they're ready to roll uh, then he started to look around for other more powerful bigger and uh, uh, vehicles with a greater passenger capacity now these uh, this is this rail car number one and indeed all the rail cars that ran on the county Donegal railway and um, there were um, about 20 altogether and certainly the numbering goes up to 20 uh, all of these have uh, the metal uh, under frames of course metal frames but above the frames above the chassis uh, all the um, the body is wood uh, and it's just the engine mounted on the front of various types and there's there was quite a range of these vehicles uh, some were uh, the original ones were petrol engine and the later ones were diesel engine and I'm going to slowly work my way through the whole lot of these to show you um, what these vehicles were like so here's number one you can still go and see her she's in Coltra as I say which you can get to from the train from uh, from Belfast from Great Victoria Street Station along the line to uh, Bangor get off at Coltra and then it's a short walk and into the museum and there she is in the wonderful railway hall that's a centerpiece of the transport section of the museum. so here we see rail car uh, number one in its uh, first uh, covered body version as uh, originally fitted out by Henry Forbes and uh, is running in Trains Railway Simulator that's Stranola in the background there 
and this is the track coming out of the station and swinging round to eventually cross over the uh, Finn Valley uh, Bridge, the Finn River Bridge. And um, so here's, here, as I say, is the first version of number number one in its original uh, passenger and mail uh, configuration. And if I just click along here a bit further and turn around so that you can ha see it approaching. It's a very diminutive little vehicle, but uh, very successful comparatively. Uh, not very expensive to operate. Just turn the key and away you go. Petrol engine, uh, quite a low horsepower. I think 11 horsepower uh, initially in this configuration, and uh, quite a quite an amazing little vehicle. This is actually on the route down through the Barnsmore Gap uh, towards uh, Donegal Town. And this now is the second version of railcar number one and you'll see that com in comparison to the uh, previous version the initial version uh, number one uh, the wheels have been uh, changed we've got larger diameter uh, wheels at the back and they're solid wheels and also there's been some change in the livery but essentially it's the same vehicle uh, I think there's a now a new front lamp there's a s series of these alterations made to rail car number one during its life and uh, to keep it running and also to take advantage of uh, bits of uh, uh, engine and um, other material that became available as later rail cars were scrapped number one was kept going and thank goodness it was because it's now preserved and I mean in this version of number one it's uh, traveling along the massive reverse curves that um, mark the route from Stranorla round to over the uh, Finn Bridge which is in the distance there we're approaching it and uh, you can see there that the, the little rail car is now sporting the CDRJC uh, motif in the back on the back panel there the rear of the side panel and uh, but otherwise its speed is going to be this is about its correct speed maybe a little bit faster it's not going to have traveled much faster than that in later years it was used uh, to haul a very primitive weed killing train basically a, a weak tank of weed killer dribbling out the liquid down onto the track uh, but otherwise it was just used as a separate vehicle in its own right so it couldn't really haul uh, very much although one of the trailers uh, there is a photograph of it on uh, pulling one of the trailers so it's a very simple uh, model of uh, the second version of number one and now we're looking at the third version of rail car number one uh, the wheels have changed yet again also the gears and the uh, axle uh, and the engine has been upgraded and it's now sporting the later uh, rail car livery which uh, Henry Forbes introduced to provide quite a, a variety of um, uh, livery, quite a variety of design to the little rail cars and this third version of number one is now approaching the uh, the bridge over the river just to the west of Stranorla so I'll just give it a little bit more speed the later versions were slightly faster than the earlier earlier uh, versions so this is quite acceptable but again they, they don't travel particularly fast it's fairly low low uh, weight in the vehicle um, and originally there were meant to be six pit passengers that could be carried but then the numbers were increased slightly uh, as the seating was improved and presumably the uh, passengers got slimmer is about the only way I can uh, imagine that that was uh, ever the case so here it is crossing over the the river with the um, the girders either side dwarfing this very diminutive rail car as it heads towards a simple um, uh, crossing connecting what's basically a very minor farm track typical uh, gated crossing of the um, of County Donegal 
with the uh, cylindrical stone gate posts either side and uh, this version of number one, the third version number one, is now heading towards Mean Glass Halt. And you can see in the background Stranola Station, so it's like a massive S shape uh, that the little rail car has traversed. And um, as I say, it would normally have uh, one or two passengers, so maybe the odd mail bag or bicycle on the roof. Uh, but again a very narrow very very small uh, little rail car but nevertheless very significant because it's the first of these uh, rail cars uh, to be uh, used by the Donegal Railway and the Donegal Railway itself was such an innovator in the use of these vehicles. And here we are with the final version of rail car number one. This is the version that is preserved in Coltra and you can see that the uh, there's been further work undertaken on this uh, diminutive rail car with a brand new or rather brand new as far as number one is concerned but a, a new driving bogey uh, two-wheel bogey at the front and it's just traveling along uh, some distance from now from Stranola approaching the road bridge at Mean Glass Halt. The road ran off to Mean Glass House which was the home of one of the directors of the County Donegal Railway. Some rather odd animation effects there from the front wheel bogey combining with the number of frames per second which I'm recording this in so if we zoom back a little bit see it just passing little mean glass halt very rarely were there any passengers um, it was just a simple uh, platform quite wide um, with uh, grass growing through it and a simple shelter and the name and a scattering of little cottages around. Um, on this layout which is uh, only part finished uh, of the route through the uh, Barnsmore Gap as you can see there's so I've still got uh, uh, sections to change, so sections to improve and of course a lot more um, foliage and uh, items in the distance to add but it gives you a very good impression of the sort of early stages of the approach to the Barnsmore Gap which is way 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 in the distance in front of the rail car and uh, so as it tracked along uh, the route pushing along as quickly as it's going to be able to so this is the final version as I say as you can see in Coltra still preserved in Coltra with the large front lamp and uh, but pretty much the same body uh, behind the passenger carrying and for males so it was uh, eventually saved in the mid to late 50s and taken to the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum so here's a final look at the front of the rail car CDR rail car number one as preserved at uh, the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum in Coltra and many thanks to Graham Place for his photographs which I've included in this video as, along with a couple of my own and um, well worth a visit, well worth to see and in fact in this photograph you can see the nose, the front end of rail car number 10 which will be the subject of uh, another of my railway history videos. So there we are, I hope you've enjoyed this, if you have please subscribe to my YouTube channel ING for Trains. It's completely free, there is no obligation, and it does encourage me to make more of these. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or and or uh, leave your own comments uh, on um, underneath the video on YouTube.